Welcome to another RDWorks Learning Lab. Today's session is a quick reprise on power meters. Now I started off life using one of these which is a Macken meter and yeah it was very useful, it proved extremely useful to me but at over $350 it's a bit expensive for most people to invest in a hobby laser machine. I and several other people in the early days looked at different ways of measuring power on this machine but at the end of the day there is only one way it appears to measure it and that is using this basic calorimetry test and I devised this little lollipop measuring head um, to do the same job as that rather expensive meter there. Now the idea was that I supply you with this head and you go out and find your own little yellow meter which comes with a couple of K-type thermocouples and then you attach the thermocouple to this and finish up with an assembly like this which you can plug into this digital thermometer and that then gives you a digital power reading system. This head has been very carefully designed so that when you're using it in the 0 to 40 watt range the temperature rises and whatever that temperature rise is is equivalent to the watts. So there's no calculation involved at all, you just measure effectively watts directly from the temperature difference. When you use this over a 0 to 80 watt range you basically reduce the time to about 20.5 seconds or something like that and then the result that you get in whatever temperature difference you multiply that by 2 and that becomes your watts. Now when you use this over 0 to 160 range the temperature difference is over a much shorter time period just over 10 seconds but then you multiply the answer by 4 to get your watts. So for the 0 to 80 range which is what most people will be using there will be a very small amount of maths involved basically doubling the temperature difference to get watts. It was a small compromise the calculation to make a cheap do-it-yourself power meter. It's not something you use every day so you know it's not something you want to invest a huge amount of money in but when you need it it's extremely handy to find out where you've got power losses across your system and whether or not your tube is actually what it claims to be. Okay so that's a little bit of history about this. About a year ago when I was in Florida um, I met up with Chip Williams who if you remember did quite a big dissertation on the design of power supplies. While I was at that meeting he donated something to me. This little device here which basically is a K-type thermocouple already nicely encased with a nice flexi cable on it that plugs directly into here. Now very conveniently it also fits down the inside of that probe. Now the original probe handles that I supplied from the center there to the end of the handle is around about 115 millimeters. So this unit will not fit cleanly into there. This is a very very silly price like a pound on eBay probably a dollar, dollar fifty. You can see there 99 pence and that will be for the 100 millimeter one. They also come in 200 and 300 millimeter long but you don't need that. The 100 millimeter one would be fine. Now, this is obviously what came with it. This is the K-type thermocouple that came with it with a nice long piece of cable on it but I found that cable a little bit annoying from time to time because it has got a tendency when you rotate it look to sort of curl up and kink up and do all sorts of silly things. Yeah, you can be careful with it and it works fine. But thank you, Chip. This is a much better solution. So if you already have a doohickey and wish to modify it to include one of these, and it works extremely well, by the way, um, you will need to obviously pick the bath sealant that I advise you to put into the screw there. You'll have to pick that out with a needle and undo the screw to take your thermocouple out. But there may be another small problem that you'll have to deal with as well. 
you might not be able to get that right down to the center point of the doohickey because the hole in the bottom there might be just a little bit small. On future units, I'm making sure that the tube and the bore match. I've got a long series drill here that I've bought. Again, about a dollar fifty, one pound fifty here in the UK. Um, it's a, an extra long series drill, 3.2 millimeters diameter. Now that goes down there, and if you put that into a even into a hand drill, you'll be able to feel it just taking out a small amount of material, and you'll feel it bottom out on the bottom of the hole in here once you've taken out the excess material. That's what I would advise you to do if you want to go down that route. Anything that I'm shipping from February 2018 will have the correct size bore in it and it will be a short enough stem to take one of these 100 millimeter units if you want to buy one. Now, there have been several people that have suggested to me that it would be a nice idea to have this unit here replaced by another little electronic box, an Arduino unit that could sense the temperature difference, do the calculations for you and display the answer directly in watts. Well that sounds like a very expensive power meter that you can buy from Macken, but it probably would be cheaper if you could make it yourself. The only problem is that's way beyond my skill set, so I'm staying with the lazy method. A couple of guys have got quite serious about it. One of them had a really good attempt, and but it never came to anything by way of um, either making something available to you guys or any instructions on how to make it. Um, he made it for himself. But about six months ago, a guy called Daniel Robert, actually I've got his name wrong because he's from Belgium, I suspect his name is Daniel Robert, spoke to me about manufacturing such a device and he, he basically asked for my help. <laughs> Why? I'm an electrical incompetent so you know there's no point in asking me to help him with the design of this. I basically donated the doohickey to him and said go forth and multiply. Well he went forth, designed and he supplied me with this device which is a fantastic little device that works just as accurately as that, as you would expect. It's got a battery, it's got an Arduino in it, it's got a little display, it's got some pieces that he's made here on his 3D printer, it's got a clear acrylic case. Let's just go in and have a little bit of a closer look at it. So we have a power button on the side, a little display, which if you're hard of hearing, You'll need your glasses on. And basically what it shows me there is the ambient temperature of the room and the temperature of the actual probe itself. Now those two temperatures when we start the test should be approximately the same. Give or take two or three degrees. It's not going to make a major difference to the accuracy of the results. But it's a very good starting point to know what the room temperature is. If I hold this button down and I let it go, the display changes and it asks for a burn time. Well here we've got a burn time of 20.5 seconds which is the 0 to 80 watt range. If I press the button once I get 41 as the burn time which is the time for the 0 to 40 range and then if I use it again press that button I get 10.5, 10.25 seconds which is the 0 to 160 watt range. So we run for 10.25 seconds and then we multiply the results by 4. Or we run by 20 point, we run for 20.5 seconds and we multiply the results by 2. We run for 41 seconds and the results are what they are. So this device once you've decided what range you are going to be using, and most of the time it will be the 20.5 range, press the button again and leave it for say two seconds, three seconds, and there we go. So we've set it up for the 0 to 80 watt range, and now all we've got to do is basically make sure that these two temperatures here are approximately the same to start with, and we may have to dip this into a bucket of water to get it down to the right temperature. 
and then we just press the button, just carry out a normal test. This will detect the maximum and it will show you directly what the watts are. Very nice, neat little device. You can't buy it from me, but what I can do is to show you on the screen now where you can go to get a full set of instructions on how to make this. You can probably contact Daniel as well and he may well be able to make or sell you some of the parts. He may well be able to sell you a kit. I don't know how he's going to go about this, but if you're keen enough and you have Arduino experience, then I'm sure you'll be able to make your own little device here if you find that's an interesting project that you want to undertake. Well, I did warn you that this was going to be quite a quick little session. And it literally is just an update on the story of the doohickey. Thank you very much, Daniel, for making this and making it available to the wider LASER community. So I'm going to display where you can go to to get more information about manufacturing this for yourself. Now there are a full set of instructions on this website and there will obviously be a link that you can speak to Daniel himself if you need to. So thanks very much for your time and I'll see you in the next session.